years. So first, uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, uh, let me see my screen, this one. So can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, I will also using this one, Spotlight. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. So good afternoon. Today I would like to talk about the pathway to spectral intelligent radio. Uh, this work is collaborated with my PhD student and also Yunghui and Branca at the Sydney University. So uh, as we know, the human history has seen three significant industrial revolution, uh, each leaping forward the society into a new level. Now we are standing at the start of the fourth industrial revolution. So the main feature actually lies uh, of industrial uh, 4.0 lies in the wireless connection of a large number of industrial devices to replace the conventional wide connection. So for example, traditional uh, factory manager machine and the wireless uh, communication, uh, sorry, device telecommunication through cables. So this is very costly, right? This demand to a convertible factory so future production line can be built in modules and be quickly uh, assembled for tasks, so called plug-in and produce. So clearly, uh, massive connectivity will enable factory to be very flexible. So machine can be located uh, across a wide area without the need for physical cabling. However, as we know, wireless connection need RF spectrum which is very expensive. This is a, a recent uh, auction uh, result of spectrum. As you can see, for the spectral band, only 10 megahertz. The winner price is the 1.26 billion Australian dollars, right? This is a quite, quite expensive. So now we have, uh, I think, a fundamental question. How to manage this massive wireless access on the constraint of a limited spectral resource. So traditionally, we're using some static radio spectral manager method. So to support a large number of devices, dynamic spectral measurement, or called a spectral sharing, has been widely regarded as the most efficient solution. However, the current spectral measurement only works in a relatively simple RF environment. For future applications like massive connectivity, uh, EMBP and the URLC, this will lead to extremely complex RF environment. So this may be featured by you know, various applications with different QS requirements, a tremendous number of nodes, uh, fast changing traffic pattern, uh, uh, dynamics, and this calls for a development of an intelligent radio scheme. So I think in the past, maybe uh, 10 years ago, Simon Hyken envisioned the future intelligent radio as a brain-empowered a brain wireless devices. So follow this line, we classify the intelligent radio into three streams. The, uh, the first stream, uh, stream one, I call the human-oriented classical signal precision, which carries limited intelligence. Stream two is machine learning, which could be regarded as a network deployment with a partial intelligence. And this is today's focus. Uh, stream three called the contextual adaptation which represent a future advanced stage of machine learning with a full intelligence. So for mach machine learning, this is stream two, we divide the machine learning into three different levels. Uh, it's called a perception, understanding, and reasoning. So this is a very similar to a child. So can you imagine how does a child uh, observe the world? First, it uh, observed the, the world, right? Observe the, the some uh, phenomen phenomena, and then try to understand uh, her observations, and finally do the reasoning, right? So now let us look at these streams in detail. The first stream is a uh, perception, right? Uh, sorry, the, for signals precision, this is a classical techniques. 
uh, spectral sensing and the decision making are the two most important tasks. I will try to move this one, otherwise I cannot see it. Okay, for spectral sensing, there are already a large number of techniques, signal precision techniques, but they usually focus on a single parameters called spectral occupancy. So this is like a binary occupied or non-occupied. Also, this scheme assumes homogeneous spectral state. So uh, due to this limitation, you will find that it's very hard to handle very complica complicated RF environment. The second thing is decision making. So decision making usually include many logical operations, such as one to perform sensing and which channel to sense and the channel access strategy, such as whether or which channel to access. So conventional studies using model dependent approaches to a beaten structured solutions. But this scheme requires knowledge of the parameters in the network. And uh, you know, the complexity of spectral environments often makes it impossible to gain this knowledge in advance, right? So due to this limitation in stream one, we resort to the interdisciplinary techniques, that is machine learning. So for stream two, uh, we will talk about intelligent radio architecture with perception, understanding, and reasoning. So for each form, we will show some of uh, our preliminary theoretical results. We will then show some practical projects with ACMA and Telstra using machine learning. So for level one, uh, perception, it involves the autonomous multiple feature identification of a signal in an unknown complicated RF environment. It's aimed to observe network heterogeneity and the dynamics from different perspectives. So as an example, in stream one for spectrum occupancy, it mainly determines a threshold theta, right, for uh, occupied or non-occupied. And uh, one recent work uh, further considered different prime user signal power levels as a new features. So it's a goal to jointly to determine the multiple theta. Here you can see theta one to theta L1, L minus one. So to differentiate multiple power levels, which is far more uh, complicated than the binary one. So although this recent work does give us solutions, but a number of parameters are required in advance, uh, you know, such as uh, the number of power levels and the value of powers, so which is, uh, you know, impractical. So we recently uh, proposed a data-driven machine learning method. It is a fully blind, as the second user doesn't require any prior knowledge of these parameters. So the proposed scheme actually cross two, I think, stages. The first stage, the second user collect a multitude of signal. And then we propose a novel Bayesian non-parametric method to autom automatically cluster the signal and try to infer the model parameters. So with the pr model parameters informed in stage one, what's the benefit? So in stage two, definitely, we can easily identify the current uh, prime user power levels. So on this basis, we can further design a more intelligent spectral, spectral sharing strategy showing this paper. And uh, uh, due to a time limit, I will briefly introduce this result. Let us see this result. We set the power levels L equals four. It can be said that the proposed method can uh, effectively identify different power levels without any knowledge. This is the best uh, solution. It needs the full knowledge of the other parameters. And uh, for the, I would also want to share with you some, I think, uh, some, uh, some visions. You know, future networks demand automatically extraction of far more features with no or minimal prior information. In our previous work, 
we only talking about multiple transmission power levels. But uh, I think in the future, the physical layer information, such as spectral occupancy, transmission power, and uh, uh, like this one, otherwise I cannot see it. Yeah. And uh, uh, constellation channel coding, this is for the physical layer. And the upper layer for application types, network topology, and the communication protocols should be mined on the unified framework. So we need to automate the extraction of a multitude of, I think, wireless signal features. So this represents a new trend for RF landscape perception. So for the second level, uh, we, our aim is to learn the structure of the RF environment in a large scale complex network and establish the ongoing RF activity map so as you can see in these pictures, we have three PU at a different location. Actually, the spectral state is different, right? For TA, for example, this point, the spectral state is zero, one, zero. For this point, the spectral state TB is one, one, O. Oh. For TC, it's one, one, oh, sorry, O, O, one, right? So the question is that, how can you get the picture of this spectral state? So I call it the spectrum understanding. The a straightforward method is to deploy a many static SU at a different location to carry out the spectral sensing simultaneously. But you know, this is very costly, right? So our idea is to deploy a small number of second users simultaneously to sample the IF channel while moving. And each send user send its sensing result to its nearby cluster head. We then develop a machine learning model to capture the spatial and temporary correlations among these IF samples. Then Bayesian inference is to uh, classify the sensing samples into different class in an unsupervised manner. For example, as you can see here, maybe we start from the point one and we move from this line to here. Definitely we are uh, experience the different spectral state like this one, blue, uh, right, blue. For the this uh, point two, if we move the, like this line, the spectral state we are experience from right, uh, purple and the green. Just the different, we're using different the color to uh, determine the different spectral state. Then we collect this data and using machine learning to infer the model parameters. Okay, if we can inform these parameters, what's the benefit? We can predict the prime user's location and the transmission range based on this classification results. Look like this one. Okay. And also we can do the refinement based on the previous predictions. So let me show the results. The results are illustrated in this figure. It's clear show that uh, all the six spectral states, each represented by a different color, uh, were identified successfully. And the coverage red, red uh, sorry, the coverage area, the solid one is the real one. And this is the, the dash one is the estimate one. Uh, we can uh, successfully uh, estimate the coverage area with a high accuracy, right? So let me also share some visions. So in this work, we only focus on the spectrum heterogeneity. So the question is that in future uh, RF environment, how to handle the invasion scenario with the fast changing dynamics and the interference. This is actually an open problem. I become is a very, very challenge. So definitely we need to develop some new machine learning method to handle this challenge. And uh, for the level three, uh, the second user can, uh, can observe its spectral environment and using its understanding to reason how to seamlessly access the shared spectrum results. I will give you an example. In practice, you know, a battery powered second user can only observe a small portion of the available channels at one instance. 
and it needs to infer, or I call the predict, uh, and select the channel, you know, the, the possible idle channels. As such, this can be modeled as a partially observable Markov decision problem called the POMTP. However, once the network dynamics, that is the state transition probability of the channel is unknown, and the channel are correlated with each other, this POMDP problem is very challenging due to the highly dimensional uh, issue and the large state space issues. This actually is an open question. Uh, it's a very long standing problem existing for 13 years, I think, the pro uh, proposed by Professor Qin Zhao at Cornell University. Okay, so it's a long standing problem. So, how to solve this problem? Recently, we know there are a very strong methods called the, you know, uh, reinforcement learning. The most popular reinforcement learning is deep reinforcement learning. But it requires a large number of training samples to tap the strong mapping capability of DNN, the deep neural networks. So this is, a, even though it's quite a popular, and I, I know a lot of people use it, but I'm still thinking that is it feasible for all the communication scenarios? For example, in our scenario, a single sensing samples for one channel can be collected in each time slot. So we don't have so many samples. In this case, I think that the DRL cannot work well, right? So how to solve this problem? Uh, we recently proposed a novel model-free Gaussian process reinforcement learning. It's called the GPRL based solution. So as a two-function approximator in reinforcement learning, the GP, the Gaussian process, is embedded to measure the spectral data correlated using a tighter desired kernel function. So this will accelerate the learning and eliminate the need for a large number of training samples. So uh, I think my idea is that in communication system, you cannot directly to apply the existing machine learning tools. We need to tailor design some new machine learning method to suit the need of this very special scenarios in communication system. So let us see some results. This finger shows the learning rate of the proposed scheme. As you can see, in very complicated environment, the DRL cannot converge, and our proposed method can quickly converge to the optimal one. And also, for the GPR outperforms DRL and other schemes significantly, and achieve an accuracy close to the optimal one. So my vision for this stream is that, uh, for this level is that, you know, the GPR in our work only suit a single user scenario, but in practice, we have a large number of users, right? So the multi-user setting is much more challenging. Due to interaction among users, it's highly desirable to develop a model-free distributed multi-user method without any correlation or message exchange. I think this is also a future work, but it's still very, very challenging. So we already talked about our theoretical result in machine learning for spectrum. Next, we will show some results on practical, I think, project collaborating with Akama and Telstra. The aim is to predict the wireless signal strings at any location so as to streamline the spectrum management. In our experimental results, the 4G LTE measurement, you know, uh, data, this data actually provided by Telstra from nine sites in New South Wales are used as the training data. So we also develop uh, neural networks to suit, to suit this data. And we predict the signal strings in four sides from other states, two from Adelaide, and uh, uh, these are two from Adelaide area and two from Br Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Let us see the results. Our results show that the proposed machine learning method can significantly reduce the prediction error 
compared to the existing HATA model, uh, the gain uh, is about 15 dBm. Okay, so the third stream has been envisioned to uh, feature contextual adaption and meet the need for future massive connectivity with its full intelligence. It will enable the radio collaborator uh, autonomously and unlock the full potential of RF spectrum. So mathematically, you know, context adaption relies on uh, new techniques called explainable machine learning techniques. In fact, you know, the current machine learning approaches like the DNN deep neural networks, in particular, work in a black box style and the decision of machine learning modules are not intuitively to human users. So consequently, trust in this system cannot be formally established and pro, uh, provided. For example, we use machine learning to predict the, the house price, right? Definitely we can easily get the result. But the question is, how can I find some errors? Can I trust these errors? Why is it so expensive? Right? So this is a quite, I think, a challenge in communication of, all, for example, this intelligent radio scenario, because all the control signal must be conducted in a clearly understandable fashion. So this calls for a theoretical breakthrough. So we recently did some, uh, some works using information theory to analyze the behavior of deep neural network. I think this is quite important because in communication system, we cannot directly apply a black box deep learning in the communication system without any insightful knowledge or insightful observations. Because of this result, we cannot trust this, right? So I think this is also a future direction in machine learning based uh, communication system. Uh, after introducing the proposed intelligent radio architecture, we would like to show some of the current development roadmap. So, you know, many government uh, regulators such as FCC, Ofcom, and ACMA has started rethinking the current static radio frequency management to correct the uh, connected digital society. I think this is the first but a very important step to go into the spectral intelligent radio. An example is recent, you know, 4G and 5G dynamic spectral sharing. Uh, what actually happened is that based on the information about, uh, about the device and their de uh, demands and their load levels, the uh, network decide how much spectrum should be given to the 4G and 5G users in just one TTI. So one TTI is one millisecond. So if you are interested, you can look at this, uh, this uh, website and they are already tested in AT&T and Vodafone, I think, in operators. And also, you know, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency called DARPA in US play a leading role in developing machine learning based spectrum management. The recent announced, you know, spectrum collaboration challenge aimed to develop and integrate advanced machine learning capability into the current, uh, I think, uh, radio applications. So the champion wins currently wins two million US dollars. And their results show that there are great potential of using machine learning for spectrum sharing. If you are interested, you can look at this uh, website and see this YouTube uh, links. I think it's amazing, this result. And uh, in the last part of this talk, I would like to briefly introduce some of our recent results uh, on a more big picture beyond spectral AI. So that is a wireless AI. So uh, we constructed a whole picture of AI enabled data life circle to streamline the data flow. So, you know, our environment and the society and the people con continuously to generate the data, right? So this data will be captured by IoT devices. Second, this data will be transferred via wireless or wide links uh, to wireless data receivers. 
So typically wireless data receivers such as 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, LoRa, and so on. Third, such data will be collected by data customers, uh, where the internet, right, uh, are using some cloud service like Google Cloud, Amazon Cloud, uh, a lot of. And um, the data clients customers usually maintains a platform that uh, uh, store and uh, provide service. So finally, data consumers, you can see here, we are uh, try to analyze data and gain some insight from this data to find some useful information from this data. So this is a whole picture. You can see that traditionally, AI only performed in this part. I call it a centralized AI. So a natural question is that, why AI cannot perform in this area, in wireless part, right? So this is called a wireless AI. And in this paper, we developed wireless AI into five different, uh, I think, schemes, like uh, uh, user device AI, actually this is called edge AI. Access AI is related to our uh, spectrum intelligent radio talked before, and also sensing AI and the data province AI. So the above slides describe a broad concept. In a narrow concept, in system level, we want to use in layer structure to simplify the network operation, like a physics layer, a max layer, and a network layer. For each layer, we want to use in AI to simplify this, uh, the layer operations. And for the cross layer, we want to build a holistic view of uh, this uh, cross layer design using AI. I think this is also a very challenging task. For from application level, you know, we have different application requirements, such as a mobile device, IoT, and a critical communication factory. So it's impossible to adopt one to n strategy. That is, you know, one network suits the different applications. Just the one network suits the different kinds of applications because each has different parameters. So an effective way is using the network slicing to run different applications on the same physical network infrastructure. However, you know, the current network slicing is manually operated, which cannot meet the strange requirement in like the industrial environment in 6G and so on. So my vision is that using applying machine learning and AI to automate automate the network slice and build a holistic wheel from application levels. So I think in this talk, I briefly introduced the background progress and the challenge and future research trend of intelligent radio. Uh, you know, this, uh, as, I, as we know, the spectrum issue is a fundamental part of wireless communications, no matter any communication, applications such as URLC, massive connectivity, EMBB, right? So I also extend this idea to a more big avenue called wireless AI, which is still in its inception. So I hope that this talk can stimulate uh, more interest in this very promising research area and encourage more effort uh, are made towards this fully intelligent wireless communications in the next decade. So this is my talk. Thanks. Any, any questions?